everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Catherine Horton, and with me is Melanie Richan from Brussels in Belgium. And tonight we are continuing the fundraising appeal for ICATOR, her human rights charity focused on measuring the uh, non consensual human body implants. And those of you who have seen the first fundraising appeal, um, we are very, very grateful. We are extremely grateful for the donations we've received. Specifically, I think uh, Melanie would like to thank one donor in particular. And I leave that to her as the president of the organization. And um, today we are continuing it because we almost we almost have the, the money together that we need. Um, we just need a little bit more so that we can cover, you know, travel expenses. We can cover some extra expenses for ICATOR, you know, to do with the running of the charity and so on. And, um, you know, and then the last remaining little bits for um, to get it um, up to what we need for, for the scanning. But, um, you know, guys, we are already 80 percent there. And and, um, you know, now we would like to update you on all the things that we've been doing. And um, we are hoping that you can use this video to, to get inspired, uh, to take confidence, and also maybe to show your family and friends about what's going on in the world. So, Melanie, first, I'll pass it to you before we explain what we've been up to so that uh, you can thank our, you know, our donor. Okay. Yes. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here. And as Catherine has already said, I'm very pleased to be able um, to confirm that we're almost there. And I would like to thank Anne in particular, uh, because she uh, has made uh, this possible that we are, as Catherine says, about 80% uh, there. So that means we have about uh, raised uh, about 80% of the money that we need to uh, be able to um, to do the scanning in the controlled environment with uh, the two professors we're working with at, at the university. So really from the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank Anne in particular and also some few other donors. We had a few little, little amounts, but I mean, I know that people uh, <laughs> make an effort. So sometimes we got 20 euros, 30 euros. I mean, um, we also would like to thank those. They're not forgotten. But Anne in particular um, made it possible that we could take a huge step uh, forward uh, in view of doing organizing the scanning at the university. So thank you very, very much, Anne, and uh, also our other donors to, to help us and support us. That really um, is, is a great feeling <laughs> to be able to, to say that tonight, uh, that uh, it, it went so quickly. And uh, we're almost there. So this is why we're doing the second fundraising appeal tonight uh, in the hope that we will uh, be able to raise the remaining amount so that we can really organize the scanning um, as soon as possible. So um, yeah, the, this is the good news. And uh, I, uh, on behalf of ICATOR as president, uh, would like to thank all our donors really cordially for, for this great support. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to switch off my mic microphone. Okay. Um, so um, I, I, yes, and I, I, one of the things I would like to say also for those people who are new joining us, uh, maybe for the first time, you probably have no idea what we're talking about right now. <laughs> so what we're talking about is uh, incredibly large government programs to implant the civilian population covertly and non-consensually with human body chips. And uh, probably many of you have heard that there are already companies, there's, for example, the Very Chip, and uh, that has been publicly discussed in the press, but there are many other types of chips that have not been discussed in the press. And uh, there were, in the beginning, very large programs testing these chips and how they work on the civilian population without their consent and without their knowledge. And now it turns out that these um, big schemes have gone industrial. So it's on an industrial scale that people are being chipped against their will um, and against their knowledge, including children, including young babies. Um, as a matter of fact, there seem to be plans to chip an entire generation of children. And um, it looks very much that these uh, human body chips are to interface with computers through, for example, mobile phones, through laptops, through any um, WLAN or any sort of mobile phone uh, communication. And this is an extremely serious, oops, sorry, I've just realized I switched, I forgot to switch my screen. I'm sorry, I'm doing everything manually and I was also keeping an eye on the chat. So I'm sorry to, to the listeners and I'm sorry to Melanie because, you know, I, the whole screen was on her. So um, I would like to show a couple of examples for those people who cannot believe that this is actually going on. Um, 
because um, as part of our work for the uh, joint investigation team as well, where we are running a, a criminal investigation into these things because the police services refuse to assist the, um, the victims uh, because these are government programs. Um, as part of our work for the investigation team, we also have lots of evidence from other victims and there's a new video footage. So many of you might know that in France, there's a court case um, happening that has, uh, you know, this as a theme, uh, secret services and uh, directed energy weapon attacks and entrapment and so on. And that's the case of Frederic Laroche in Grenoble in France. And he has uploaded, or he he already showed me this footage um, back in, um, in November 2017, but I was not allowed to... Um, presented publicly because it was his private footage but now if you click on the link on my website I, I should say I came here from my my own website which is stop007.org under news you'll currently find the second link the first one is a very good interview with our colleague Dr. Melissa Black and the second one is um, it takes you to Frederick's case this entire case is about his court case and previous interviews and here you will find a video where he is using different measuring devices to scan himself. So at first he uses the green um, Acousticom 2 to show that there are no backgrounds. Okay, I'm not gonna show you the video, but he, he, he's got two measuring devices there. Number one is the, the green measuring device for the background to show that there are no backgrounds in his home. And the second one is a bug detector. And um, you know he he's he's going through, and then in the um, here you can actually see um, that he's scanning himself and and finding the body uh, the um, the head chips and and the body chips, and um, this is pretty much in exactly the same location as most people have them and most people find them. So this is what's um, so uh, so staggering. And then there's also a second um, video which I'll show you in a moment um, by a lady from the United States who has um, also measured herself. Oh yes, I've got it here, sorry, I can, I can share my screen. And just to show you how prevalent it is, because this was now, Frederick is in France, Melanie is in uh, Belgium, we already scanned her, we, you know, her chips have been found many, many times, and I'm in uh, Switzerland, I have been scanned, you know, chips were and frequencies were um, shown to come from my body, and we also